Well, hello. My name is Pastor Zane Brooks, and I'm the pastor of the Wellington Free Will Baptist Church in Wellington, Kansas. Glad you're uh, tuning in. You're going to find a lot of different types of uh, communion and even feet washing. But in the Free Will Baptist denomination, we believe in communion and feet washing. Now, communion is the, uh, the, the representation of the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. We believe it to be the representation of... We don't believe that it's a real blood, nor the real body. We believe it is the representation of the fruit of the vine and the bread. And so the story that I'm going to tell you just briefly is a story that starts way, way back for my wife and about 22, 23 years for me personally. So what happened was, is years ago, uh, Nadine Ledbetter of the... Westside Free Will Baptist Church. She would always, I understand, long before I was here, she would always make the communion bread for the church. And she would prepare that bread and then bring it to the church. And the, uh, the pastor, her husband, Jack Ledbetter, would administer the, the bread and the juice to the church and they would have communion. Well, some 22 years ago, almost 22 years ago, Charlotte and I moved to Wellington, Kansas, and we decided that I wanted to know what it was and how she made communion bread. Well, of course, many of us probably think it's a bigger deal than what it really is. But there's a story behind the, the communion bread. And she told me the story. I watched her, and I helped her make the communion bread. She's now since passed on the matriarch of the Westside Free Will Baptist Church, that great church in Wichita, Kansas. I'm a, a, a direct recipient. My wife is her great, or excuse me, granddaughter. And so I was able to learn that little small technique. To It's, it's not as much how important and how much ingredients and all the things. It's the intent. It's the meaning behind it. So... I want to read you a couple of scriptures as back those days that Nadine, Grandma Nadine, taught us these very things. And I remember getting close and sitting on a stool beside her and, and listening to her talk about the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt. And you might remember the story. If not, you can find it in Exodus chapter 12, verse 33 and 34, and we'll jump even down to 39. Talks about when they were getting out and they were going to spoil the Egyptians and they were, have, they were going to have to leave early and quick. And so as a moment's notice, Moses would say, it's time, let's go. So they said, and the Egyptians in 33, and the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. After the plagues, after the ten plagues, and of course, after the death angel, they were ready to let the children of Israel go. So in 34 says, And the people took their dough before it was leavened, and their kneading troughs, being bound up in their clothes and upon their shoulders. This was a very, you know, eating, preparing bread, preparing your food, preparing the, the daily ritual of eating bread, and what they had to eat, the kneading troughs and the, the, the preparation that went into making bread was quite extensive. But they were going to have to leave so early that the Word of God says that they were going to grab everything they had even before they were able to put leaven. Now leaven means yeast or a, a rising agent that makes the bread rise and makes it nice and fluffy and good says they were going to grab these things and put them in their clothes and put them on their shoulders and they were going to go as quickly as they could. And verse 39 says, And they baked unleavened cakes, unleavened cakes, unleavened cakes of dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were, in th they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. In other words, they were just ready at any moment's notice, they had dough ready. It was going to be leaven, but they had to go so quickly, they didn't put any leaven in it. They were just taken off. And then they would 
make their cakes or make their loaves of bread. And of course, it was going to be flat bread, if you will, going to be small. It was going to be uh, not risen. It wasn't going to be a, a big loaf of bread. It was going to be, matter of fact, much like what we see as pita bread, small, flat. And so I wanted to give you a little story behind that. You might hear in my, my uh, oven's going off right now. I've preheated. I feel like I'm at a cooking show or something. And so I've preheated our two ovens in our, in our uh, fellowship hall. I'm going to lay my Bible to the side here. And I'm going to start my process. And, of course, many of you are probably uh, following the same guidelines as I do. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I put on these gloves here to prepare. I've wiped down the table, or my lovely assistant, Charlotte, wiped down the table. And this here, you may say, well, what is this? Well, this is unleavened flour. It's, it doesn't have, now it's bleached. And it's pre-sifted. Of course, it's going to be prettier and whiter than what they experience. But this has no leaven in it. It has no yeast in it. And that's the point. You may say, what is in the leavened bread? Well, it's simply nothing more than water and flour. Now, I know that may sound strange to some, but that was the point. They were so in a, such a hurry to get out that they literally had nothing but flour and water, and they made their dough. So what I'm going to do here, in a, in a real crude way probably, I'm going to make and stir my dough, and we'll probably not be able to actually make it to the point where you see it cooked. We'll put it in the oven, then we'll come back as they do on those real nice cooking shows. And we'll lay that out there. I'm just going to empty that out now. And now I'm going to knead this together. I've got me some more dough over here prepared. I mean actually flour prepared. And I'm going to put this in the oven at about 400 degrees. Get it nice and nice and crispy. Because in the New Testament, they said they broke bread. And they would come together and they would, in the, in the upper room, Jesus broke bread with them. And so, I'm going to get that. I'm going to see if I can't give me a rolling pin now. Roll it out. You might want to throw a little more flour on it. Make it. You say, you're not doing a very good, you're not a very good chef. Well, no, I never, I never pretended to be a chef. That's not what I, this is all about. But what I did want to do is to roll it out and make dough without any yeast in it. For 21 years, I have been doing this with those that are um, participating in our communion and feet washing. And so, it's kind of... Nice, and I need some better gloves. That's what I need, because when I put these little guys on, they don't make, they kind of, there we go, get that off there. And then, and I'll put this one on. Put this one on myself, where I can lay it out real nice. And then I'll lay it on some cookie sheets. Once I lay it on the cookie sheets, let me go grab a, grab a cookie sheet real quick. Lay that here. Put me a little bit more flour on it. So it's looking a little sticky. So I'm going to roll it out. I'm going to get it nice and rolled out flat. See, there's no real rhyme or reason how flat and how sticky or, or how whatever, you just lay it there and you break it when it gets nice and hard from the oven. Come on off there. So, there we go, that's a much better. I'll pick it up, lay it there, that back. 
So we'll be doing this. And now have this prepared, ready for our communion and feet washing. They go together. Some of you may not know that, but they go together in the upper room when Jesus was with the disciples. In the upper room. Now, I'm going to take this over here, and if I can get my handy cameraman to follow me, I'm going to put this in the oven. I'm going to leave that in there for until it gets nice and crispy, golden, depending on how you like it. But uh, some will be a little chewy, and some will be a little hard. But you'll be able to break that with uh, the brothers and sisters in Christ. And we want to make sure that we have the availability to you. And we're going to pass this um, communion bread out for our members of our church and for those that want to, to participate with us. And so we're going to do this with you. And we're in, in unprecedented times, I understand. It's difficult to do all the things we one time did. But you'll need some grape juice. And you'll need some, some uh, communion bread. And if you want to come by and pick up some communion bread... I want you to. I want you to come by and, and we'll pick it up and we'll do it together there um, online. And so if you will, I want you to know that God loves you with all his heart. He sent his son to die on the old rugged cross that we might live. And so we're going to remember. We're going to remember and memorialize the great events that has taken place. And yes, we may be watching uh, Palm Sunday online. We may be watching Easter service online, but we can still stay together in our hearts and our minds. God bless you, and have a great day.